Once a year, one of RuneScape's best money makers becomes available, and in today's video, I'm gonna make as much GP from it as I can. It's a method that's gonna boost my bank to a whole new level, which I desperately need because I keep giving it away for some reason. I logged into the Deadman Apocalypse servers with one goal in mind get to the agility pyramid as fast as possible. On the main game, every time you complete a lap of the pyramid, you grab an agility pyramid top and give it to Simul Templeton for a cozy 10,000 GP profit. But I discovered that on this server, every time you trade in one of these pyramid tops, you instead receive 30,000 GP, three times what you usually get. On average, with an agility level of 75, we're looking at collecting around 20 pyramid tops per hour. On the main game, that's about 200,000 GP, but on this server, that's 600,000 GP per hour. You might be thinking, well, 600k doesn't sound that great. Well, that's on the main game, but on this server, it's amazing. Every time one of these Deadman servers comes out, there are people thirsting for GP. In fact, they are so desperate that they're willing to pay money on the main game just to get their hands on GP in this one. On the first day of Deadman mode, for every 10,000 GP you own, you can on average receive about 700,000 GP on the main game, a rate of 1 to 70. So you're telling me that all I have to do is just collect a pyramid top, trade it to Moneybags Templeton over here for 30k, which equals 2.1 million GP on the main game? Sign me up. I think you guys will be impressed with just how much I was able to make. Stay tuned. There is so much content on the horizon for Old School RuneScape. We've got Deadman Mode now, leagues later this year, and a brand new skill coming next year. This is stuff you're going to want to be online for. You won't want to leave your house. And you might be thinking, well, I need to eat. You're right, but that's why HelloFresh exists. HelloFresh delivers pre-portioned ingredients and easy to prepare recipes right to your door. You spend less time grocery shopping, cut down on food waste, and save money since it's way cheaper than ordering takeout. With over 40 recipes and 100 seasonal and convenience items to choose from, there's something for everyone. The recipes are very easy to prepare, so even if your cooking level is one, you can still make a tasty meal like this Mediterranean salmon with creamy dill sauce, green beans, and couscous. Healthy and delicious. HelloFresh is a great way to learn how to cook and prepare meals. You can do it by yourself or with someone else. The end result is always the same, a mouth-watering meal for you to enjoy. If you've always wanted to try it, now is the time. I've got you guys covered with 50% off. Use my link below or go to hellofresh.com and use code POGSOUPAUG50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Enjoy. To prepare my account for the long-term stay at the AP Airbnb, there's a couple of things I had to get out of the way. Obviously, this is dead man mode, and you can be attacked pretty much anywhere. And if you die, you lose almost everything on you, as well as the 10 most expensive items in your bank. To successfully claim as many pyramid tops as I can, I need to get this account a little tanky first, so we're gonna do some absolute classic quests to bulk up a little bit. One of the unique things about this game mode is that there are different servers for different combat levels, and each server progressively unlocks more things for your account. The combat level 3 to 50 servers have these quests unlocked. Some pretty basic ones, so we need to knock out some more. The first thing I'm doing is getting my hands on some sigils that will make this process easier. This game mode is full of tier 1, tier 2, and tier 3 sigils that you can equip. At most, you can have 3 attuned at a time. The first sigil I have is a sigil of stamina, which means I'm permanently under the effects of a stamina potion. Perfect for getting some of these early quests done quickly without having to worry that I'm constantly out of run energy. The second is a sigil of the menacing mage. This sigil does extra magic damage and will occasionally heal me for my missing HP. Almost all low level quest bosses are killed pretty easily with mage, so this one will help speed up everything and heal me which is always useful. Finally, I have the sigil of resilience, which restores my hit point stat 10 times faster than normal. If I ever get low on hit points and food, I can rely on this sigil to heal me up faster. Anytime you enter a combat bracket for the first time, you have one hour of protection from PvP, so we need to get moving. Up first, 25 agility at the gnome stronghold core since we needed to start the grand tree quest. After after starting the quest, we need to head down to Hazelmere near the Tree Gnome Village area. So while we're down here, we might as well complete Tree Gnome Village. Every time you complete a quest on Deadman Apocalypse, you get 10 times XP for the rewards, which leads to some insanely fast leveling. The 114,500 attack XP reward from Tree Gnome Village gets us from 1 to 51 attack. 50 levels, just like that. 121k attack XP and 21k thieving XP gets us 58 attack and 34 thieving. Finishing Grand Tree gets us 184 attack XP, 21k magic XP, and 79k thieving XP. You need 30 agility to start the agility pyramid, but ideally you should be at least 50 so you don't fail too much, so this quest reward is great. One of my favorite things to do on a boosted XP server is to use bones on the chaos altar. There is nothing more satisfying than taking 10 bones into the wilderness and walking out with overheads. 
you can go from 1 to 43 prayer just on 10 bones, which takes about 10 seconds. And of course, we have to finish the waterfall quest, the quest that you always do on a new account. 52 strength levels gets us up to 48 combat. The final quest we're doing on the account is Witch's House, which is desperately needed since we need some hit points levels. This quest alone gets us from 21 HP all the way up to 46. Since we're now over 50 combat, we can up up one combat bracket and we'll have another hour of PvP protection. Oh. Not even close. I took 10 minutes to train up my defense to level 30 for just a bit of extra protection, and bam. After a little over one hour of prepping, we were finally at the Agility Pyramid. The really nice thing about being here is that I still have 45 minutes of PvP protection, which means I don't have to worry about dying and can solely focus on getting those Pyramid Tops. At level 50 Agility, I'm still failing around 2-4 to four times before getting to the top, but that number will go down the higher Agility I am. The nice thing is that you completely stop failing here at 75 Agility, and since I'm getting more than 200,000 XP an hour, that won't take too long. Alright, my PvP protection is over, and I've collected 10 Pyramid Tops in total, which means I will be turning those in for a whopping 288,000 GP. Now currently, I can trade that at a rate of 1 million main game GP for 10,000 dead man GP, which means all of this is currently worth 28 million GP on the main game, which means that one hour of doing the Agility Pyramid on these servers is 28 million GP an hour on the main game. Whether you're trading the GP on your own or using a CC, this method is available to anyone. It is one of the best and easiest ways to help build your bank on the main game. For the first day, my game plan is to stay here as long as possible. The plan is simple. Get as many agility pyramid tops as possible in one trip, teleport out, trade the money to the main game, and repeat the process. The agility pyramid is for the most part fairly safe, but the occasional PKer will show up. Thankfully, it's very easy to get away if you just keep calm and use the pyramid to your advantage. For example, if a PKer gets on you, all you have to do is cross any of the obstacles on the pyramid, then try to go back across Cross them. The game doesn't like this for some reason, and you will always fail, which causes you to fall down to the level below. This creates a fantastic escape from any PKers and saved me multiple times from losing hundreds of thousands of GP. If a PKer happens to get on you before you even get to the pyramid, you can use the stairs at the start to your advantage as well. Just keep going up and down and pay attention to if the PKer follows you. If you're able to go 7 seconds without getting hit, you can teleport out and you're home free. I'll be honest, this was the entirety of my day one playing this account. About 10 straight hours of doing the Agility Pyramid. In total, I collected about 100 Agility Pyramid tops, which I turned into Simon Templeton for 3 million GP. The average rate of trading over GP to the main game on day one of DMM was about 600,000 main game GP for 10,000 dead man GP, which means that in total, we made close to 180 million GP on the main game. Around 18 million GP an hour just getting some top of the Agility Pyramid. Make sure you guys are all subscribed since we're trying to catch up to Mr. Beast. Thanks. Day two on dead man mode was a continuation of day one. I did more laps of the agility pyramid, traded in more pyramid tops to Simon, and made more runescape GP. At one point, I reached 200 agility pyramid completions and was ranked 39 agility in the game. You guys know I hate this skill, but the fast XP rates and the great money I was making made this pretty bearable. Who would have thought? After I'd finished my agility pyramid grind, I'd unknowingly unlocked one of the best agility shortcuts in the game. This shortcut in the Revenant Caves. It requires 89 agility to cross, a level that less than 100 people in the entire game mode even have. Revenants are known for being some of the best money in the entire game, but they are also a very popular hotspot for PK. This shortcut now becomes a lifesaver. After training up my ranged and defense, I was now level 70 combat, the highest possible combat level I could be in the 51 to 70 combat bracket. I talked to Nigel and Lumbridge, who lost my XP so I no longer have to gain levels, and I was officially looking like a beast in this bracket. Now it was time to get as many Revenant kills as possible. My friend and I decided to stick near this spot in the Revenant cave, so we would always have access to that shortcut to help us escape. And it really did come in handy. We got attacked dozens of times here, but every time we did, we just hopped across the shortcut, watched as the PKers were unable to fall gave them a little raspberry and a kiss, and continued on our merry way. It's weird to say that I actually felt pretty safe here. The money of course was fantastic. I'm sure all of you are aware of the incredible drop table revs have. You've seen it in any rebuild series anybody has ever done. You get loads of alcables, resources, and supplies. One trip here would take about 25 minutes, and on average I was bringing back around 500k profit, all with this simple gear setup. 
With these sigils equipped and the agility shortcut escape in my back pocket, the money kept rolling in. We were feeling so confident in the cave that at one point, the Revenant boss spawned next to us and we thought, you know what, why not? I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Yes, come on baby, ancient totem. Oh sh there's a PK here. Oh sh it actually might be over for me because I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Please tank it, tank it, yes. I tanked it, three HP. Not gonna lie, that was kind of a close call. That emblem I received was worth 1 million GP. And if I hadn't have tanked that last ranged hit from the PKer, I would have lost everything. In total, about a day of grinding revenants made me around 10 million GP. The swap rate on day two averaged at around one to 25, which means I made around 250 million GP. I never thought I would say this, but agility, at least on deadman mode, is kind of an amazing skill. Another moneymaker on this game mode is heading to the breaches that spawn three times a day on every server. These breaches spawn bosses from around RuneScape, like Bandos, the King Black Dragon, Slayer bosses, and more. Players on every server will group up and run to where the bosses spawn and have an all-out fight against not only the bosses, but against other players as well, since everything is in a PvP zone. These breaches are some of the most fun I've had playing on the game. Killing God Wars bosses north of Falador, hoping for a drop to land in your name, all while praying no one attacks you is, I'm not gonna lie, kind of exciting. In case you're wondering where everybody else is, I'm using the Entity Hider plugin on Runelight to hide people so it's easier to see the bosses, but there is a risk to this. If I get attacked, I have no ideas attacking me, but hey, at least I can see the bosses. If you get lucky, you can make some great money here. Not only does it feel like a bunch of random loot spawns on the ground every second, but you can also get your hands on a tier 5 emblem. You can sell it to this emblem trader north of the Grand Exchange for points, which you can then buy a bunch of different items with. If you want, you can just spend all your points on things like stamina potions, sell them to the GE, and make a bunch of money. Really easy. If you get really lucky, you'll receive a PvP weapon or a weapon trinket. This weapon trinket can be opened to receive one of these corrupted items. I got lucky and managed to get my hands on one of these trinkets as a drop. Yes! Yes! Okay. I got it! Here we go. Oh, claws! Unfortunately, I got dragon claws, which is one of the worst items I could get, but that still made me 700k. If these breaches look fun to you, I'd highly recommend hopping on these dead man mode servers and trying them out. You can level up an account super quickly and have it ready to go in just a few hours. Don't forget that every time you log into a combat bracket world for the first time, you have one hour of PvP protection, so you won't have to worry about dying. The economy on a game mode like this is always hilarious to follow as well. Items that are cheap on the main game actually become expensive on this one. Unusual money making on this server would be way too easy. Here's a really quick one. If you have very little GP, just head to the Shanty Pass and buy out a full inventory of bronze bars. Sell all of those back to the Grand Exchange and boom, 8.5k profit in just a few minutes. If any of you want a little starter money on the servers, I'll happily hand out some 10ks to any of you to help out. Just join my friends chat in game, soup, and let me know. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys at the next breach. In total, I profited just under 450 million GP off the first four days of Deadman Apocalypse, and it was some of the most fun I've had in a long time. Most of my time on this game is spent getting b-roll footage for Gilinar games and one remains, so I don't get to play as much as I'd like. I think that's why I was having so much fun. Hopefully this video was a fun watch for you since it's different than what I usually do. One more thing, I have actually been doing one thing on the main game. Check this out. Yes! Let's go, baby! Oh my god! Feels good, man. Yes! Finally, an Inferno Cape on the soup account. After 19 tries, I finally managed to slay Zuck. No more cheesecake for me. In September, you can look forward to another One Remains episode, but I'll also be busy recording another series that I think you guys will all be excited for. You probably know what I'm talking about. Season 4, anyone? I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs>